My name is Ruth Bolo. I come from Homabe County, a constituency called Karachuanya constituency. I do a lot of things. I come from Homa Bay, but I am not necessarily based there. I do have a community library in Homa Bay though, in uh, central Karachuanya ward, where we have children that just come in and uh, read books. We even have toddlers that come in and color, just so that there's really good use of their time. But generally, I work at the Kanu headquarters. I am a member of the Secretariat as uh, under the programs office, where I work as a national youth coordinator. I'm still under Kanu. I also represent the party and Kenya at large in a board called Young Democrat Union of Africa, where I serve as the chairperson of the International Relations Committee. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, um, because the world is majorly going digital, not just because of the pandemic, but also because of ease of work and because of uh, time, marketing, all these things, I think it's very important to ensure that there's a level playing ground for everybody, for all special interest groups to be able to just, you know, um, play out whether it is marketing themselves, whether it is learning, because we also learn a lot in the online space nowadays, whether it's communicating, whether it is, uh, you know, looking for certain um, fellowships, looking for scholarships, looking for business partners. I think it's very important to make the online space um, a level playing ground for everybody. I have personal experience, but it's not just because I work for a particular party. I think just by nature that I'm in politics. It's like there's an unwritten rule that any woman in politics has to be cyberbullied, has to be harassed. And I don't know why we feel like it's a must. And that's why we've coined words like siasa sio kanisa. And we have coined words like you have to develop a thick skin. Well, initially, those words would be made to sort of console the victim and enable them to be strong enough. Um, by virtue of working at the secretariat, of course, there are people who are not happy. Again, politics is about interest. So any single move, even if you're just coughing, you're definitely stepping on someone's interest. You're definitely making it harder for them to achieve it. So I've had instances where things have been said about me, where uh, people have ganged up to say things that even they know is not true. And more often than not, it's not people who are far away from me, it's people you know. And with politics, it's even worse because one, you have to face um, bullying both physically and when you come to the online space, it's there again. And in the online space, these are people who are scared to face you. These are people who would still come back and ask you for help. And the minute you refuse to offer them whatever help it is, be it monetary help, be it just sending a number, be it in form of networks, then you automatically become the devil. And so it, it, it's there and it's very unfortunate because um, we've been made to believe that you can't complain about it because you chose to be in the political space. You shouldn't complain about it and that it's normal. No, it's not normal. It's not. And so it's happened to me uh, several times, but um, I don't know whether, to, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate enough that when I joined the political space, um, my very first experience my very first harassment experience was physical. Um, and so I think by the time I was getting online harassed, I had already sort of built a filter or rather a wall around me. And I also have a really strong network of young women in the political space who will also come to my aid when, when there's something wrong. Um, whenever I feel someone else is wrong, I stand up and say, no, 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 no. Um, this one I won't I won't agree on it and if I feel that someone is being bullied best believe I will speak up against it whether or not the person is my friend or the person being bullied is my friend or whether or not it's my friend doing it I will say it because if I don't say it then the next time it's going to happen to me and I'm not going to have anyone to stand up for me When we say women have too much of the microphone, what does that mean? When we say women should give other people a chance, 
who are other people and what does that mean because women should have a voice just like any other person and and um when we come to the african society a woman is a woman is supposed to be seen and not heard and that's what has been propagated for a very long time but when the modern days and that narrative is changing and women have got a lot to say women are no longer being beaten and keeping quiet they're no longer being sexually harassed then in the political space there's sexual corruption so there's sexual harassment and the sexual corruption and both happen in the political space but women are no longer keeping quiet about it and so women cannot keep quiet and cannot be denied the opportunity to speak just because they are women they have a lot to say and it is only them that can tell their stories very well yes we do need men but we need them to help us change some of the things that are happening in the society not to tell our stories how am i going to 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 tell um the plight of a dentist if i have never been in here or she's shoes how am i going to fight for a teacher if i don't know what they're going through when their wages are are you know um being there's misfunding or something so it's only women that can tell their stories it's only women that can tell their narratives and we have to acknowledge that for a very long time um women were, for a very long time women did not have the access to basic mobile phones and i'm not talking about the digital phone let's just go to even the basics for a very long time women didn't have that they had to either go to their husband or someone to be able to you know and and I'm talking about women in the rural area so now years later women now you know have their own email addresses they are now because now the state actually recognizes them as human beings they can actually go on with their lives as normal so now they have mobile phones now they are on social media platforms and so we want to tell them to you know stop talking no 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 this is a time to encourage women to come out and speak about anything that disturbs them where they pin the the shoe pinches most let the women shout about it because if we are going to raise formidable women who can take this country and not just in the political space but in every single industry every single sector then we need to allow them to use their voice in the positive way back home and i know a lot of people normally say that you know um when the men are out here and they're alpha males when they go back home they have someone else to answer to in fact there are memes of people saying you know um the one thing my dad is afraid of is my mother and and they're funny but you know it's because the women have voices and a woman will tell you no you're on the wrong Oh yes you're right let's do this and so i think the same respect we accord women in our homes is the same respect we should accord them in the online platform allow them to speak and i know in the political space once a woman begins to speak up about certain things then they are told you know they're always reminded wewe ni mwanamke lazima unyamaze lazima uongeleshe watu in a certain way you know um and they are you'll you'll find that they will always use of course your sexuality will always be the first thing um that is used to go against you the second thing is may, maybe money your financial status is also something that they uh, go after you body shaming things like that so it's not time for us to dim uh, the voices of women rather it's time for us to now brand them and to now train them to one protect their online spaces and two use their voices positively and in the right way because i may have a voice but if i don't ha- know how to use it then i'm it's as good as just keeping quiet um i definitely think there needs to be a societal conversation but how it's a conversation that has been there with very little impact and very little implementation this is because when we have societal impact about patriarchy we mostly say how patriarchy has affected the woman only but it's affected the man too because patriarchy states that you as a man you've got to go out and toil for your family and your family does nothing but now patriarchy we with or rather with uh, the whole feminism aspect of it and people coming stronger the woman is being empowered but the man is still expected to maintain his patriarchal thoughts so i think we need to approach it from a point where we make the men realize just how much patriarchy has affected them as well and then we have an understanding from both the genders that is one 
Two, I also feel like um, we need to have a, con a, a candid conversation with women. Um, most of the time when we are having these kinds of conversations, when a woman has a scandal or anything, then they're most likely to say, but you know, she should not have done that or she shouldn't have uh, sent the photos. It's always a bad to make the woman look wrong. But a time has come when we should stand up for our fellow women, women in public and then go behind closed doors and now correct them, okay? That way, then those who continue to propagate and they continue to propagate and they continue to, you know, push the women are then able to realize that, okay, you can't come at women that easily. And they're able to know that when a woman and a man have been caught doing something they feel is not right, you either ask both of them or you shut up. And um, I mean, there's always the question of who dictate, dictates to you what is right and what is wrong. I mean, if it's not in the constitution of the country, then you can't dictate what is right and what is wrong because people have been brought up in different ways. People have got different backgrounds. People have very different experiences that mold who they are and they shape their opinions. So who are you to tell an adult what to do and what not to do? Especially if you're, I mean, I know if you're in the political space and you come from the pastoralist area, for example, you have unwritten expectations. Then there are, you know, unsaid boundaries that you should not cross and when that happens when both a woman and a man cross them best believe the woman might even be disowned you know from the dressing and we could be going for an interview a man and a woman and the woman maybe has her hair done wrongly or the man and the man has got his tie not well done but no one is going to ask about the tie so what we definitely need to do is um, apart from a societal conversation let's now make um, proper steps Let's tell women that, for example, number one, you can censor what you don't want to see from your page. Because when I can't see an insult, I, can't, I won't respond to it. I won't know what has happened and you will get tired of insulting me. So what happens is that there's a ripple effect. With time, people will realize, hey, you know, I, stop, I will stop commenting on Ruth's page because Ruth doesn't respond. And they will move on to someone else. But if they move on to someone else and the person responds, then there's nothing we've done. But if they move on to someone else and that person has also been told that you can censor your, your page, you can filter what you don't want to see, with time, they stop. We also need to have a conversation on the mental health because no normal person will just wake up and say, I mean, I'm going to be rude to Ruth, you know? I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to, you know, um, sexually harass her online. And especially for us in the political space, the most common thing is that, you know, you either slept with someone to get to where you are or you, you know, it's the most common thing and it's, it's getting old. But unfortunately, even people in my generation use it. So what then needs to happen is we need to talk about people's mental health. We need to find out why are young people, because young people are majorly the ones that are used even in propaganda, and you know, propaganda has been uh, said to be the most powerful political tool. No, 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 it's not propaganda, it's bullying, plain and simple. And so we need to have that conversation where we tell people, or rather we, we find out why are our young people having mental health issues. We tackle that, and the unemployment issue is solved, they're busy, nobody is going to take time out of their work to talk to you. Nobody is going to stop in, uh, you know, if they have a mental health issue and they're addressing it, they're not going to stop addressing that issue to attack you. So cyberbullying is basically a, an, if, an effect from a lot of things. So let's not just cure the symptom, but let's go to the root cause of it. And then we will have a long lasting solution. the time we are told you've decided to have a social media account so you it means you don't want to be private which is not necessarily true but for us in the political space we are in our own rights public figures so it's then very difficult to maintain um, privacy however I think we need to have the conversation where we say you know you can have your, you can be your public figure and still keep certain aspects of your life private. I 
I absolutely think it is very important for people to document um, both their struggles and successes in the online space to be able to like again you've asked um, just show people who have joined or who want to join um, the, the online space um, I will give you two or maybe three scenarios the first one is when I first joined active politics away from campaigning for a particular candidate I was mainly with men I think I was, for a very long time, I was the only woman in a group of more than maybe seven, eight men. And so because I knew um, that, you know, and I had, because I had seen it, yeah, from others that the first thing is that they would say, you know, she's sleeping with other people. In the political space, they say, uyo ni mboga, yeah, so and so. That is the language that they use. And so what I decided to do, and again, because I had seen, if I had not seen that, I would not have known. So it's important, that's why it's important to document so that others can know and prepare themselves. So because of that, then I was able to brand myself in a way that everybody in that group, first of all, saw me as just their sister, you know, because again, I was still building my brand. And so even by the time anybody was thinking of propagating that, before they said anything, anyone else would be like, oh my God, it's not even possible. You should see how they hang out. So I was able to control the narrative way before it caught out. When I was getting um, appointed at the National Secretariat of the Kano Party, of course, again, like I said, the people who are not happy. And um, I remember last year when we were um, in the COVID period, we because most people were at home and so they were very idle. And um, there was a story about how um, my colleagues and myself, all women, by the way, uh, we had been matched with certain people and we were, there was a rumor that, you know, some of our bosses had taken a chopper and taken us, to some very funny island and I remember asking uh, one of them ah, yeah, is it that I have a twin who looks like me that I don't know because I have not stepped out of this house ever since and it was growing and there were new things every day and even people who knew why and how I got my position what I'm capable of would be like ah, today I saw the slay queen online she didn't respond and find eventually when we moved to the office, they would still be like, and mind you, I'm not responding because again, I have just gotten this job and I can't risk losing it. And so they would be like, so today I've just seen the slay queen, you know, they're out there, they're just eating. And then so even just coughing was an issue. But because I had um, not seen someone else go through that experience per se, I probably didn't know the best way to go about it for me i chose silence but not because silence has always been my go-to way of, of defending it has actually never been my go-to way of defending myself or, or dealing with bullies i chose it because i didn't know what to do let's create that militia and let people know that there are repercussions when you bully people. We have let it go on for too long, to the point we have kicked our own president out of Twitter. So we've, let it, we've allowed it to go on for too long. So I think it's the best time to talk about it, and it's the best time to do something about it. If we don't do this now, best believe we are going to do it in five years to come. Because after next year, people will be trying to settle in to their new spaces. No one is going to enter to this into the creating an, an online a space. But if we do it now, by the time they're settling into the offices and people are, and you know, the country is stabilizing, then it will be a norm and people will continue with it.